you take the thousands of thermometers all around the world, you add them up and you look at their trend, over the last hundred years, we're a little more than one degree Fahrenheit warmer than we were a century ago. Impacts are not the warming itself, but what does the warming do? Well, the warming increases the likelihood of heat waves and reduces the likelihood of cold snaps. That's been observed all around the world. Mountain glaciers are receding in most of the world. Sea levels are rising, which is what happens when you heat the oceans. They expand a little bit. Uh, ice sheets have been melting in many places. And now we've observed that plants and animals are starting to move around. Uh, trees are blooming earlier in the spring. Birds are laying eggs earlier, returning from their tropical wintering paradises earlier. All of this adds up to a compelling and overwhelming picture of a warming world. Ice caps, glaciers, and ice shelves around the globe are melting. It's one of the most serious signs of warming. 90% of the glaciers in the world are melting, and they certainly are melting here in the northern United States as well. Here in Glacier National Park, Grinnell Glacier has already melted 63% and only has a few more decades to survive. Kilimanjaro's glaciers are disappearing and may be gone entirely by 2020. 653 billion metric tons of ice, an area larger than the country of Luxembourg, has broken off the Larsen B ice shelf, which has existed in Antarctica for 12,000 years. The northern polar ice cap has shrunk by over a million square kilometers, an area the size of Maryland, California, and Texas combined. Melting ice means rising sea levels. Ocean surfaces are expected to rise by up to seven meters by the end of the century, jeopardizing all cities located at sea level. But the island of Kiribati is already inundated. In other parts of the world, water resources are shrinking. The Sierra Nevada snowpack is projected to decline 40% by mid-century. When the snow starts to melt, in the spring, you can measure when the peak flow is. Well, that peak flow is two weeks earlier in the year now than it was three decades ago. And that's not just one place. This is in many parts of the world. But what do I worry about in the, you know, the, the deep recesses of my mind? They aren't us. We're a pretty resilient species. We can, with effort, adapt, although poorer people will have much more trouble than will richer people. What can't adapt? are plants and animals, because they have very little natural capacity to respond to changes that are rapid. Well, the impacts I worry the most about in the short run are a change in the likelihood of droughts and floods and fires. 